Hello, my name is Peter Rossthorn, and I'm here to talk to you about WebGL. I'm going to be talking to you about WebGL in the context of the um, Mozilla Ignite Challenge, where we're looking at building applications from the future. Uh, the idea being here that uh, we have partnered with Genie uh, and the Genie Network to be able to build applications that would be using unlimited bandwidth at uh, increase of speed with also having the uh, use of smart networks. So the challenges that we're building are within smart networks and looking at innovations from a sort of civic nature and health, education, energy, public safety, that sort of idea. And what we're focused on is using open web technologies to be able to build these new technologies. So we're focused on the uh, technologies of, of Mozilla-based uh, technologies and also within sort of the web maker and the Mozilla way of doing things. Uh, looking at HTML5, WebGL, WebCL, WebRTC and other sort of cutting edge web technologies. So what we'll be doing is that we're going to go through exploring WebGL um, as a technology and how that could fit within this super network. So here we are, just a quick look at the Wikipedia page and you'll find as you're learning more about these technologies in this space uh, that you're going to do a lot of searches on the net and, and lots of resources are available to you. I strongly suggest that you use those resources. Um, also use the resources that we're going to be making available as sort of learning labs uh, within uh, this whole initiative. So what I'm starting with here is this idea of using WebGL on the Genie Network. And what we've got here is we've got this global environment for network in innovations. Um, and there is a, a challenge that's been put out uh, where there's financial rewards for certain progress projects that progress through to, to, to completion sort of idea. So WebGL is one of the technologies that we will be encouraging people to use. Um, as I said, there is no shortage of good information about WebGL out on the Internet already. One thing that I think is important to draw your attention to is, is that there is also a number of existing tutorials that are very good. Um, if you need to get more information about WebGL, you can see here is a, a uh, listing put together by Benoit, who is, a, who is a, an employee with uh, Mozilla. And you can see here he goes through a number of demos, talks about browsers and, and hardware acceleration and those sorts of ideas. So um, there's also numbers of other tutorials here. You can see there's also the Learning WebGL site, which has a number of great tutorials starting right from the beginning and working your way through to getting into more and more advanced topics within using WebGL. Um, you could also find um, that there is a number of outstanding video tutorials. This one in particular, put together by Eric Moeller, um, is just a fantastic video. The first Eric's heavily into gaming, and he put together a two-hour, uh, two-and-a-half-hour uh, video tutorial that really gets into it. I spent, I actually spent the two and a half hours to go through this video, and and you'll find that he, you know, will, he's got the screen up and he's coding, and really gets into demonstrating how to use WebGL. So I, I don't underestimate the number of of resources that are already out there and available to you from sort of existing tutorials. Uh, also, take a look at uh, the resources that are on uh, the Mozilla Developer Network. There's a whole area here that's dedicated to WebGL, lots of topics, lots of links to other things that you can go in and just to increase your learning. Um, you'll also find that there's a number of great blogs that exist um, that you can explore to keep yourself up to date. And, and again, as in, in many sort of development communities, you will find that there is an outstanding uh, Google group that's very active that can help you um, in solving a lot of or getting assistance on a lot of your uh, WebGL type questions. So I strongly suggest that you use any of the resources that are available to you um, within WebGL. So one of the things that we went through when we were putting together this idea of, of different sort of um, Ignite Challenge webinars or, or learning labs is to explore these different web technologies that we really wanted to be able to put those within context. So one of the things that we did is is that we have taken and, and we went through and 
harvested numbers of the ideas that were coming from some of the candidates that were putting in ideas. And as you, you can view them here if you want, or you can go up onto the Ignite site and look at other people's ideas that they've published and, and review those. And, and so we started to look for themes that came out of them. And out of the themes that came out of them, and there was numbers that were having to deal with sort of rendering 3D um, within a browser, but having such um, sort of high bandwidth 3D in the sense is that you're, you're actually got a live image from numbers of different locations and you were bringing those together and you needed to render those images within the browser. Um, so, And the idea of this really took us down and have, had a discussion about what is known as point data. Um, and the idea of point data here is is that it's instead of instead of rendering your your three dimensional objects um, um, sort of with with geographic shapes mostly triangles and rendering any of your three d shapes within a, just a whole massive number of different sized triangles that sort of idea it actually takes points of data and, and puts those into a three dimensional coordinate system so so you know you've got special cameras that can turn around and, and capture uh, a whole series of, of images which will make up uh, a three a three dimensional movie or a video or whatever you would like to call it and and render those images but more from a three dimensional coordinate system or what's known as point data um, one of the the tools that a lot of us who are uh, familiar with gaming is is that the uh, <coughs> the the Microsoft Connect device will also capture um, 3D or point data, which is excellent for us because what we are going to try and do is an experiment uh, in the very near future looking at um, looking at capturing point data. So let's go a little bit more back to uh, what is WebGL and, and how it all fits together. And, and as I was sort of learning about WebGL, I, I really needed to sort of say, well, what is it? I come from a, a fairly solid programming background, um, mostly sort of from the web development area and, and, and from sort of education and, and search and IT-based sort of web development, not so much into the into the graphics area. So I started really exploring, you know, how could I, how could I learn more and, and you know, coming from an educational background, I also started to take it from a, a, a sort of a very adult learning perspective. So <clears throat> the first thing I started doing is I just did a lot of reading, but one thing that I found is putting together a concept map here. And the idea of a concept map is is that it, you take your main idea and then you start you start building concepts around it. So really what WebGL is, it's based on OpenGL or it utilizes uh, uh, web OpenGL ex embedded systems, and the idea of what OpenGL is, and we could explore a little bit more of that. Um, here is this idea that it's a graphics li uh, library or an application programming interface that allows you to render 3D on embedded systems like mobile phones or, or PDAs and that sort of idea. Um, so what WebGL is is it's the it's the it's the web equivalent to render in a browser. Um, most of uh, WebGL and OpenGLES and, and OpenGL which is uh, based on sort of using hardware acceleration uh, from within your computer. So it really um, it leverages and takes advantage of, of being able to render images using hardware acceleration. Um, WebGL is is programmatically controlled by JavaScript, and there's a, a very large collection of, of developer libraries that you can utilize um, to help you sort of do your work within WebGL. Um, the neat thing about WebGL is it, it works in both desktop browser and moser, mobile browsers. So uh, a lot of the, a lot of uh, work within uh, within gaming or within anything where there's images and 3D images being rendered on a, a desktop browser or mobile browser, WebGL is becoming the sort of the de facto standard here. Um, the WebGL and OpenGL are also maintained by the Kronos Group. So if you want to spend a little bit of time looking there, you you can you start to get a sense of really the extent in which the Kronos Group is really impacting sort of the the, the 3D imaging and and that that uh, and on the resources that cluster around that. And we'll take a look at that in in the very near future. Uh, so really, the idea here being is is that you've got WebGL. It can be used in a number of different application contexts, so things like design and mapping and architecture, healthcare, gaming, and that sort of idea. So you know that when it came to my learning, and, and I strongly suggest that you you you, you take the time to to find out about WebGL and how it fits in with the, your existing knowledge, and and you'll find that 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 uh, is a great help 
for how how to understand uh, what WebGL is and, and where it fits sort of in, in the technology ecosystem. Um, so I, I continued on my journey of learning and, and sort of said, well, where does WebGL fit within you know the whole ecosystem, as I mentioned? And as you can see here, WebGL uh, fits in within, sort of utilizes OpenGL or, or OpenGL extended system. Um, and it, it uses the, the canvas aspect or uh, many aspects of HTML5, but in general, it works very well within an HTML5 environment. Um, as you can see here, it also has sort of this bit OpenCL, which is really dealing with clustered and acceleration with of how to sort of the advanced computing where you need to have, you know, just more than one computer engaged in, in rendering your really advanced sort of visual visual environment. So so this sort of image really helped out a lot too. And then it was this so idea of how do all where does the stack of all the technology fit together? And so I really spent some time looking for images and, and came across these ones, or this one in particular. And you can see here that you've got uh, OpenGL ES and OpenGL, which is sort of more more at the computer level right against the devices and, and in the hardware acceleration. But then you start from a web browser perspective, you start to leverage what, what these libraries are, what this software is from a WebGL and JavaScript perspective and, and putting that into the web browser and, and out onto web content. So that kind of got into this whole sort of WebGL ecosystem. Um, so as I progressed further uh, in my learning, I was fortunate to be in a situation where I could have the opportunity to interview um, some WebGL experts. And you can see here that here is one of one of those, uh, what I turned into podcasts, I spent the time talking to, to a, a fellow by the name of Bobby Richter and, and also Ben Moskowitz and, and took that and edited it a bit and got it down to 18 minutes and, and we just sort of were really blue skying, you know, what sort of stuff you could do with WebGL. It was sort of a, a very useful process and, and again, had the same sort of, uh, opportunity to even extend that conversation where, really get focused in on what point data is. So we're sort of moving back to the idea of point data and why it was important. And we're able to engage a couple other sort of Mozillians in this thing, in particular Benoit Jacob, who who ha is, is a very, has a great depth in his knowledge of, of WebGL and, and sort of 3D within the browser-based environment. So, so to sort of bring this full circle, um, what we were really looking for here is this idea of, of finding ideas within within the whole Ignite challenge and, and use, utilizing those ideas and, and, and driving where the te open technologies would fit and could assist. So that's where we ended up getting into uh, WebGL. Um, so as you can see here, we got into the idea of, of, of looking at this point data. Now, when you start exploring point data, again, it's the sort of thing where you want to be able to uh, take a look at it from a, from a Wikipedia perspective, um, take a look at what's available in sort of a point cloud. And, and this is an excellent uh, demonstration of it, what, the, what we've got here rendering on the screen here, is this idea that there are you know points being rendered in a, in a 3D coordinate system. And it ends up creating quite a, a strong um, 3D visual um, object. Um, and then you could go in further when you get into point stream is, is that there are a number of, of sort of tutorials and, and, and areas of data where you can start looking at point data and the images and, and getting into finding yourself some tutorials and, and be able to run it. So you can look at the source code um, and there's a number of opportunities here for you to gather and teach yourself about what there is. Again, some, some great YouTube videos about how to do this sort of stuff um, within WebGL. Uh, again, another another area where you can see, um, see um, uh, point data at work and looking at one of the libraries, but there is a number of libraries and again this should go back to this idea that that when you're looking for opportunities with using WebGL and point data is that you should spend the time to look at what's available for you in the way of in the way of libraries. Um, so that is the sort of first section uh, uh, of this uh, of this sort of workshop or screencasting workshop where we've really taken the time to to set things up in the way of looking at the different places to look. We're talking about using WebGL uh, on a super network. Uh, we're looking at the fact that there are already numbers of existing tutorials that you can use to gain more information about WebGL. Um, a number of resources that are available to you already on the net uh, from Mozilla and from other locations. Also a Google group. 
And then when we g dive down even further and we're starting to look at some of the uh, Mozilla Ignite challenges, what we've got here is we're really starting to look at specifically using WebGL with a, in a point data context. Um, and we will follow up very soon with another screencast as we look into building an experiment um, around point data and, as I said, the, the, the Microsoft Connect where we can start capturing some, some point data and, and utilizing that across a network. So um, stay tuned and, and looking forward to uh, talking with you again. Have a, have a great day.